And today we'll be looking at some different U.S. Army tunics from World War I and the different types, the different models, and the uh, sub-variants of those models of some of the collections that I have in case you're looking at uh, purchasing one or would like to know more about them before you make a purchase. Uh, I'll try to uh, do like an overview of all the ones that uh, there are and maybe you can make a better informed decision about uh, whether you would like to purchase one or just more about the uh, different types and more about them, these, uni these tunics in general. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, to start us off here, we're going to be looking at the cotton khaki tunics, uh, starting with this one right here. And now something about the khaki uh, tunics, they were not issued to the overseas troops. Now there are cases where they were brought over, but they were exchanged for wool. That was the standard uniform of the uh, overseas troops, uh, was wool. And the state side, they would wear these cotton. Uh, originally, it was just for the summer months, but over the time, uh, even in the warmer warmer states, we'd get to keep these until uh, they saw fit to uh, make the change to wool. And so this is the the, uh, the cotton tunics M nineteen twelve are all unlined, as you can see here. There's no lining, and uh, there's different colors. This one's on the darker side. And when we get into the other ones, uh, they'll be lighter. But this is, uh, according to this, was belonged to someone in the 52nd Infantry of the Medical Detachment or Department. Uh, if these uh, collar uh, discs are, in fact, original, which we'll get into that a little bit later. And over here, we have a service stripe. These are down here. These are issued... Uh, Course of the course of the war, gold meant it was six months uh, overseas service. And I believe eventually that just happened. Like the second you're on the boat, you're considered overseas uh, to apply for one of these. Silver was a six month stateside service. And I believe light blue was overseas, but it wasn't for six months. And right here, uh, these are kind of hard to tell sometimes. I'll get into a closer look a little bit later. Um, but from what I've seen, you can tell based on the stitching that's around what color it is. And it looks like, I believe this could be gold, but maybe silver, it's kind of hard to tell. And then up here, if you can see this real well, this is a honorable discharge stripe. Now today this looks more like a private first class symbol. Uh, and it wore one, it was, it was a little bit weird. It was a circle with their uh, branch on it. But in this is an Arbo discharge stripe that would, of course, they did on their discharge. And we have rimmed buttons along here. Uh, now, it's interesting, the uh, shoulder straps out here aren't cross-stitched, which every other uh, uniform I have will be showing has cross-stitch. Uh, but I don't really know. And also... No stitching on the cuff here, and uh, I'll talk about that with the next uniform here. But uh, this one, starting us off here, M1912, very neat. Next up, we have another M1912 uh, cotton uniform, and uh, designed just like the previous one. As you can tell, there's no cotton lining. But unlike the previous one, this one has double stitch cuffing right here, if you can see that. And... That's one of the biggest variations you can tell the difference between an M1912 and an uh, M1917, which we'll get into uh, later with the wool. But uh, I don't believe there was any M1917 cotton tunic. I believe they're all 1912 issued across the board. And uh, again, like the previous one, although this one, uh, you, it has hooks at the very end. And I've noticed that on other ones, and it has some uh, stitching, for, I guess, possible buttons right here. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, the collar disc, this is the uh, U.S. National Army monogram. And across from that is an infantry company E disc. And something that's cool, but also unfortunate about this one is they have either one or two service stripes, possibly an honorable discharge stripe that's no longer there, and very 
very uh, faded right here was a wound stripe but uh and that's one of the problems with these is that they typically fade away and i believe there's also a uh possibly a division patch that used to be on the shoulder but it's no longer there they either uh you know got moth eaten and just dissolved or uh the previous uh owner of this may have taken them off to so which happens unfortunately um but yeah it's unfortunate when that happens uh but one thing that is pretty good about uh cotton uniforms are generally in a better shape than wool because they they're not really uh under the threat of being moth eaten and things like that that the wool's going to be um and of course rim buttons like these this one uh a lot of times they don't have uh, their buttons have gone unfortunately but it's fairly easy to sew them back on if you have someone who uh knows what they're doing um yeah here's this one print now it's a, a definitely a lighter shade if the camera can see it, it's a lighter shade than the previous one but yeah here's another one and we'll move on to the next and this will be our last cotton tunic we'll look at. Um, again, double stitching M1912. And unlike the previous one, this one actually has the uh, uh, maker's tag, manufacturer's tag, which is regulations call for them to be right here inside of this pocket. And I'll tell you, I believe this one's dated uh, September 26, 1917 by the uh, Philadelphia Clothing Depot, or the Pins Clothing Company, I believe. And also, this one still has its um, uh, size tag, and we'll look at that later. And this one is also marked with a name. Uh, unfortunately, I've tried, I believe it says winning, but of course, over the time, you can't really tell the names anymore. They kind of fade, which is unfortunate. And speaking of things that fade, we have these um, wool, or well, uh, bullion uh gold service stripes so these are definitely gold you can tell and so that would mean uh a year service overseas the college or the, of the national army and the ordnance department and again unfortunately i don't know if you can see that there used to be the red honorable discharge uh patch but unfortunately it's just the stitching that it used to uh a B in, which is unfortunate. And again, no lining. There's this little bit on the cuff. And again, rimmed buttons, service or uh, manufacturer's tag in here. And yeah, this was the, the lighter one, so they kind of. And I'll show the these in a little bit the different uh, colors of all of them. But uh, this will be the last one cotton wool cut and now uh, let's move the wool actually before that let's look at the different uh, shades of color for the cotton khaki tunics this goes darkest to lightest uh, in the order that we looked at them and uh, just thought it was kind of interesting the different uh, color dyes that were used and uh, it's very uh, very neat starting off with the wool uniforms we have uh, this what I believe is an M1912 tunic. Unfortunately, there's no stitching on the cuff. That would be the uh, obvious answer. But uh, this is a lot lighter than uh, the previous wools I have, and I believe that's one of the things that the M1912 was. Uh, it was a lot lighter wool than what they'd later use for the M1917, and it's got a quartermaster's uh, quartermaster sergeant insignia right here on the uh, uh, right shoulder or uh, right sleeve rather and rim buttons like the previous now there was this uh, kind of uh, amber colored buttons that they would later issue as these would actually during combat uh, which has to get in, uh, in the wounds and infect the wounds and therefore this like uh, this amber color button that was of different material was introduced but uh this does, this is the a standard rim button and it's lined unlike the cotton and this uh, there's a pattern kind of a uh, like a plaid kind of 
thing on the inside of the sleeve here. And the uh, two buttons off top, a standard US collarance disc and a quartermaster disc. And uh, these buttons were pretty loose, which is unfortunate to sew these back on. And it, another thing about the wool uniforms that's unfortunate is they uh, are the most fragile to survive because, of course, wool can be like moth eaten and things. It's a lot of less stronger over time than a, something like khaki is, as you can tell. Like cuts right here and up there on the shoulder, which is unfortunate. Uh, but uh, if they're in a right place and are not, uh, you know, moved too much or like placed in like a, a good environment, then uh, they're they're gonna last uh, for a pretty good amount of time. Yeah, this is the wool. Wool was the standard issue of the AEF sent overseas, and I believe the only one that wasn't sent over wearing wool was the 40th Division, due so to some, uh, I think, mix up, I believe. But then they would. Uh, exchange them out for wool and yeah uh, this is the first wool tunic and uh, now let's move on to the uh, third. all right next up we have uh, this wool one which is probably one of my favorites that I have in that it's actually a manufacturer's mistake now if you look right here if you can tell this stitching right here this was part of the old uh, M1909 uniform that they, for the uh, M1912s, they got away with and just did the normal uh, horizontal stitching. But this one still has it. Uh, and from what I read, this could be part of the first, maybe a thousand that were ever made of the M1912s could have this error uh, because they were kind of made like an assembly line type uh, manufacturing. And of course it's lined. And if I had to guess this dates uh, from 1912, given the uh, air of this, and there's no manufacturer's tag, unfortunately. And right here, the buttons are rimless, which uh, the rimmed buttons were introduced in 1912, but uh, rimless was still around, because these uniforms with the rimless were uh, uh, issued during World War One. There's photographs of them. And... Now let's make this a, a manufacturing error and not a hybrid is that the pockets, uh, they aren't billow pockets, which uh, that means they, they come out, they extend. Uh, all these, like they're stitched, they're stitched down. So they're flat like this. And the uh, collar is the standard collar, which was the uh, M1912. Uh, uh, edition. The M199 had a uh, stand and fall collar, uh, a little bit like what I'm wearing right now, except a little bit uh, more of a closed uh, opening. And uh, this one, of course, it doesn't look like there's been any uh, stitching done like the 1909-1912 uh, hybrids were, where they take the uh, old 1909s and turn them into 1912. This isn't one of those cases. And also it tells me that there's no uh, second collar uh, disc hole on either side. There's only the one on this side, one on this side, uh, which was the 1912 uh, uh, specifications that there is just one disc on each side. But that's what tells me this is a manufacturing error. And this is really uh, interesting, uh, the kind of Thing this went through now i don't know if this was a uh, ever uh issued during world war one there's no uh discharge stripe or service stripes or anything like that there's a name but unfortunately i can't really make it out so i can't really uh, really track down what well, now these uh those collar discs are uh not original to this i added those for a uh, a separate uh project thing but uh yeah Oh, and also there's a inside pocket right here, which uh, is something that I've never seen before uh, in any of these so far. I know they definitely, uh, like the British made ones had uh, interior pockets, but this first that I've seen, uh, all the wool ones I have, none of them have it, uh, 
interior pockets uh, except this one. But really, uh, really neat. And we'll move on to the, our last uh, full uniform now. And lastly, we'll be taking a look at this uh, M1917 uh, wool tunic. Now, the most obvious difference uh, visually you can tell between the M1912 and M1917 is this stitching on the cuff. It, uh, M1917s only have one. And now this isn't just a normal 1917, this is a, a rough cut uh, variation of it. And the rough cuts are sort of an oddity in uh, War One uniforms. Uh, no one really knows why they exist. And I think the leading theory is that possibly these were, the uh, War Department issued these to uh, former trench coat makers for the army. That's kind of why they look like the way they do. And what tells me this is a rough cut is the unfinished hems and kind of the, uh, well, rough cut nature of it, I guess. Uh, and the uh, pockets here are kind of wider than normal. And also it's very, it's a lot heavier than the uh, uh, normal ones would be. It's a lot heavier, it's a lot rougher, I hate to keep saying that, uh, but also, uh, there's no liner. This isn't lined at all. Now it has a manufacturer's uh, uh, tag on it in this pocket. I can't really make out the company, but I can make out the, the date 1917. And I believe rough cuts, I think maybe between the uh, summer of 1917 to the uh, early spring of 1918, uh, these were uh, issued. Um, you can definitely tell, like, up here in this collar, it's very, uh, uh just, it's not hemmed, uh, like the uh, previous ones where it's, like, a smooth trend, like this. It's, like, it's very hemmed right here, and this one is not. And it's a very, uh, interesting uniform. And, of course, over here we have the honorable discharge stripe, and this, uh, the collar disc, uh, this so uh, it was a belong to someone in the uh, medical corps, and there's also a name written on the uh, inside collar. Unfortunately, just an initial, which is H G, which that doesn't really, unfortunately, tell me anything. And of course, these buttons uh, are, it was not original. These were added later. And. Again, like one of the uh, cotton ones, it has this little hook on the end here, which I've seen, I guess, to close it better. Uh, maybe doing like review and something. But yeah, this is uh, the rough cut. Very interesting. I don't know uh, how rare these are. Uh, rare enough that they, or no, not rare enough that they, I mean, they, they're known. They're not uh, kind of out of nowhere. They do exist and there's a lot of uh, different examples of them through like photographs and surviving examples but uh, yeah this is uh, this is the rough cut and this is the uh, last uh, tunic of wool that we're going to be looking at. Alright that's going to do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you next time.